the advancement of AI is being felt here at UNC, from the creation of lesson plans to research methods. The thing that comes across first and foremost with AI is how excited and enthused everyone is. Dr. Michael Barker is showing us rows of servers, which allow UNC to maximize its artificial intelligence capabilities. With AI, we can now narrow the number of targets that need to go into the lab. And so instead of testing hundreds or thousands in a lab, we can test dozens and that speeds the process to identify new drugs uh, to treat diseases. Between the Provost AI Committee and the AI Acceleration Program, the university is working to set guidelines over its usage, as well as provide recommendations for funding of fellowships and projects. I think one of the drivers had to do with democratizing uh, access to AI. Its increasing prevalence in society is impacting the job market. 56% of businesses use AI to improve operations. More than half do so for cybersecurity and fraud management. In fact, we looked up these statistics using Google's AI overview tool. Sort of the saying in the AI world is you're not going to be replaced by AI, but you'll be replaced by someone who knows AI, right? So this is why it's crucial that, that students um, have AI skills and that faculty have the AI skills to impart to the students. Professor Mark McNeely incorporates AI in his classes, even teaching an AI entrepreneurship course. Students are definitely using it. Still, finding the appropriate balance is a source of ongoing conversation. If I'm writing a letter to my daughter, if I'm writing a letter to about condolences or something like that, it matters that I write it rather than that the machine writes it. So it puts us in a circumstance where we have to think about what it is to interact and be human. I'm Michael Perchik, ABC 11 Eyewitness News.